Hi to our listeners, let's learn sumo. I'm Clayton, welcome to the podcast yet again. We're at day four and just at the end of day five of the January Basho in Tokyo. Uh, join me on Instagram at Let's Learn Sumo or Twitter and ask me any questions you'd like to get to. Okay, some big news out of day four yesterday. Uh, Takakesho pulled out with a pinched nerve in his neck. Uh, It's the long-standing injury. Uh, He is unlikely to ever recover from it. He just has to manage it the best way he can. Also, I think uh, we might have said uh, Takayasu was out uh, on day three, I believe. So uh, missing two of our people. So we'll just go through some of the uh, matches as we had them on day four. Uh, Mitakayumi and Surugisho. Uh, Mitakiyumi, uh, met they met at the touchy eye. Uh, he went a little bit diagonal. Surugisho was a bit too committed, and Mitakiyumi got a really good under-shoulder grip um, and allowed Surugisho to get him to the bales with a bit of help, and he got an Okuri Dashi backwards push-out. Meisei and Sadanumi, they met up. A uh, really good Sapari thrusting win. Uh, against Sadanumi. This was, uh, I was quite impressed with this one from Meisei. He, uh, I've not been too impressed with his sumo over the last few months, but this was a, a fairly impressive Sapari thrusting win. Uh, he's fighting much better this tournament. Uh, Oshidashi, uh, he's 8 and 4 against Sadanumi, but he had really good power in uh, this one. Tamawashi and our big round belly man, Hiradumi, super motivated sumo. He, uh, Hiradumi got a. Uh, a double grip, and he used his body to force Tamawashi back to the bales. He got a win. Asanayama versus Hokuseiho. Asanayama got a really good front belt grip off the touchy eye and drove forward. Hokuseiho went back to the Tawara bales. As Asanayama, he got that double grip and forces Hokuseiho over. Asanayama 4 and 0, his uh, joint leader. Hokuseiho, the big, tall, leaning tower of uh, large man. Look, uh, we've talked about it before. We'll go into his... Um, he, you know, we've got to give Hokuseiho a little bit of a break. This is only really his sixth basho in uh, Makuchi. Uh, I, I think I, I have seen videos of his uh, coach trying to get him better at the touchy eye and things like that. So, yeah, we'll give him a bit of a break. I, I mean, I'm not real fussed on his form of sumo. It's good against some people, but as he goes higher, it's not going to be so effective. Nishikigi and Shonanumi. Uh, Nishikigi got a left body grip as he applied some really good pressure, forcing Shonanumi back to the bales. He went down frontwards, uh, but Shonanumi touched out first with his foot. Tobizaru and Kinbozan. Tobizaru waited for Kinbozan and thrust his hands down. Not really a henker. Uh, he got Kimbo off balance and thrust forward as Kinbozan turned, and he went out backwards, push out a Kuridashi as well. Uh, Abi versus Hokto Fuji. Abi meets at the touchy eye, but he stepped back after that initial hit. Uh, Hokto Fuji recovered, and a bit of a thrusting battle as Hokto Fuji got forced back to the bales under pressure. Pretty good resilience, but uh, Hokto Fuji moved slightly right at the bales as Abi overcommitted and gets thrust down Sukiya Toshi. Uh, so a good win there from Hokto Fuji. Kotonowaka versus our. Riser Atami Fuji, uh, really good strong touchy eye from both uh, our Sekiwake and Megashira One. They gripped up arms. Kotonawaka got an, got an arm under Atami Fuji's right shoulder and he executed a pretty good Karasakashi Midori Fuji style under shoulder pull down. Uh, I'll notch that one up to experience for Kotonawaka. He's done really well there. Uh, Daesho versus Shodai. Shodai tried hard to get into a thrusting battle, but again, Daesho, he just overpowered him out. Uh, as I keep saying, if you're going to get into a, a, a Supari thrusting battle with Daesho, you want to get it right and you want to get it perfect because uh, he is the man to do it. Ura, he got himself a Fusen default win over Takakesho, who pulled out, so that gets Ura his first win for the January tournament. So up into the Ozeki matchup with our newly demoted Magashira 1 Wakamoto Haru versus Hoshoryu, our Mr. Intense. Uh, 
this was a great fight. Uh, just strength. Massive comeback from Hoshoryu. Look, a big forearm blast by Wakamoto Haru at the Tachi Eye. Uh, resulted in a netic, not a neck thrust push on Hoshoryu. And he did bend back a fair bit. He absorbed it. Uh, but he went back in with a big body grip on Wakamoto Haru. And as Wakamoto Haru went forward to attack, Hoshoryu got his left hand uh, right under Wakamoto's arm pit on the right. Pulled him around, off-balancing Wakamoto Haru. Hoshoryu pressed it up um, by putting Wakamoto Haru up on one foot. A bit of a pirouette by Waka uh, as Hoshoryu deposited him over the bales with a hand on the belt. It was a really good win. It was an exciting match, and it was a fairly rare Kimarite. It was Okurinage rear throwdown. We haven't seen that one for about... Four years, Okuri Nage rear throwdown. Nage is normally all of the throws. So uh, Uwata Nage, Okuri Nage, that's how you remember that one. The next one, uh, look, I would say this is another one meets our fight of the year list. Uh, I would put Wakamoto and Haru and Hoshoryu. I'd put that one on the list to look at later in the year. Uh, this one, Midori Fuji versus Kirishima, our Ozeki looking for Yokozuna. Uh, look, they met at the Tachi. I remember uh, Midori Fuji has beaten Kirishima before. It was more arms than body, and not sure whether that was Kirishima's intent, but it probably helped Midori Fuji as he moved to get his right hand under Kirishima's left armpit. And as we know, uh, that's a dangerous thing to let Midori Fuji do. It is his stock in trade, Karasukashi move, getting the hand up under the armpit around the shoulder joint. Uh, Kirishima tried to lock that hand up. He really applied some good strength there. Midori Fuji's hand was moving about Kirishima's mid-body as he struggled to get his hand released or moved to a left belt grip. Um, he struggled and somehow Midori Fuji had his grip. Kirishima knew he had him right under the shoulder and uh, Midori Fuji pulled hard to the left, putting Kirishima just slightly off balance and it he had an element of leverage to it as he did it, um, using that shoulder. It was almost like an armbar shoulder leverage. Most unusual, but once off balance, Midori Fuji pressed his claim by lifting Kirishima to one leg as Midori Fuji then pushed down, thrust down on Kirishima's shoulder for a fairly exciting Karasukashi under shoulder pull down that he suffered yesterday from Kotonawaka. Uh, so look, that was quite the win uh, on Midori Fuji. Uh, I would say it was quite noisy in our house as we watched that match. Uh, that one goes straight to the list for the end of the year to look at again. Certainly in context, Kirishima looking for uh, Yokozuna promotion. It doesn't hurt it that much. It is a scratch on his uh, trip to Yokozuna promotion. Maybe, maybe a little dent, uh, but no more than that, as long as Kirishima doesn't lose too many early. No one really, in, since the days of Hakuho, maybe 15 uh, wins will win the Basho, but these days 12 13 will get you there quite easily or certainly in the race. Uh, Midori Fuji, after the, after the uh, match, he did the interview with the uh, NHK broadcaster. He was happy with the first victory as your, Oyakata was telling him to get his opponent to go forward. He had no real big game plan, but he was able to get inside and it worked out for him. He kept his distance. He was really happy. Uh, he needs to be able to beat the top ranks or he won't be able to get to Sanyaku. So that is his goal to start beating the uh, Sanyaku ranks a bit more regularly. Um, in other good news, I heard yesterday, Midori Fuji is off the market. He's apparently married. Uh, they're having a ceremony on Valentine's Day, February the 14th. I know some people will be very disappointed at that news uh, uh, that Midori Fuji is now married. Uh, maybe uh, he was a bit distracted back when he got married in, uh, I think it was September, he had a pretty poor tournament. Yokozuna Terunofuji met Gonoyama. Reasonable touchy eye, but Terunofuji caught Gonoyama's right arm, got a left on his belt, and it resulted in a very fast Watanage belt throw straight into the crowd. Big man, big throw. Uh, that is Terunofuji's kind of stock in trade, that grabbing of arm and throwing. I know he's been criticised before, but he says it's uh, effective, and I'd have to agree with him. 
Uh, end of day four, we have three fight of the year contenders already. Uh, just some absolutely corker matches so far. Day five, uh, let's have a look at where we're at. Aoyama, who's come back up to Makuchi after he got demoted to Jurio, did well down there, but he's currently 0-5. He lost to Onosato today. Onosato doing well. Uh, four and one, our uh, debutante down there. Kota Shoho, fighting well. Uh, good thrusting, good footwork, messy arms, lots of thrusting. Uh, prevent Churanumi getting a belt grip. Eventually pressured him out. That's four wins for Kota Shoho, three and two for Churanumi. Uh, Miyagiru versus Oho. It was a big mata from Miyagiru. So like quite a forceful one. So they go back, they had another go, a bit of a false start. Oho waited for Miyagiryu at the second go. Uh, tried an arm pull, kept moving. Miyagiryu kept trying to move, but Oho, he just kept the thrusting pressure up for an Oshidashi win. That gets Oho to 4 and 1, Miyagiryu at 1 and 4. Takanosho and Sadanumi. Takanosho powers Sadanumi out in seconds. Sadanumi tried to slap down, but it was all too late. Uh, and he sits in the front row. Yorikiri, Takanosho, 3 and 2. Sadanumi not doing well at 1 and 4. Meisei, fighting well, like we said. Uh, Surigishio, uh, flurry of Sapari thrusting from the Tachiai. Meisei gets a Sukadashi thrust out over the very much larger Surigishio. Uh, that puts Meisei on three and two. Surigishio, again, one and four, not doing so well. Uh, Mitakayumi versus Tamawashi. Look, they've got, these guys are super experienced. Mitakayumi, a uh, very large man. Tamawashi, not too small himself. These guys have five trophies between them in Makuchi. Five Basho, Yusho wins. Uh, three and two, I think the uh, number comes out at. One with three trophies, one with two. Very unusual. Tamawashi, our former Ozeki. Uh, so these guys, quite experienced, still wrestling. Uh, look, a bit of an extended arm Tachiai, lots of arms, uh, Mitakuyumi. Uh, Mitakuyumi's arm got locked up by Tamawashi, tried to stop him getting a grip, turned into a bit of a stalemate in a very low position. A uh, bit of a pull through, but it didn't work for Mitakuyumi, and Tamawashi got an arm under Mitakuyumi's neck to lift him up, get him up off balance for an Oshidashi push out. Three and two for Tamawashi, three and two for Mitakuyumi. Uh, one of our joint leaders, Asanayama versus Hiradumi, our round belly man. Uh, Hiradumi kind of balked and hesitated at Tachiai, and that's all Asanayama needed. There was a bit of an advantage to push a uh, balked Hiradumi straight out. Hiradumi didn't look too happy about it, but um, the replay showed that Asanayama had both his fists on the ground, so uh, I think Hiradumi just balked himself. So Asanayama, 5-0, and undefeated. Hiradumi, 3-2, and doing okay. Uh, at, at five days. Hok Seho, the Leaning Tower, versus Shonanumi. Shonanumi went straight for a right rear grip and initially died, uh, denied Hok, uh, Hok Seho his favoured Migi Yotsu, his right belt grip outside. Uh, look, a bit of a stalemate. Shonanumi, look, I was watching this thinking, you've, you've gone about this the wrong way, Shonanumi. You need to be a bit more active against Hok Seho. Um, getting into a belt grip leaning match with him and, you know, simply trying to prevent him getting his uh, one-handed belt grip is not going to last you too long. Uh, Hoxeho has shown many times he can just wait it out. Uh, what he doesn't like is very active sumo and lots of pushing. That tends to uh, upset Hoxeho's game. So, look, Shonanumi took Hoxeho to the bales, but he just didn't have the grip. He, at last moment, his fingers were coming off the mawashi. Hok Seho had the grip and used his thigh for a good leverage to execute a belt throw. So Hok Seho gets a two and three. Uh, Shonanumi, a little bit of inexperience there. One and four. A Shetata Nage throw. Nage, remember, being the throw uh, Kimarite. Nishkigi misses the Tachiai and allows Ichiyamamoto to start his Sapari thrusting with a bit more power for a very quick Oshidashi force out. Uh, Pretty poor sumo there from Nishikigi, to be honest. And Ichio Momoto, like I said, he hasn't got a lot of a power there, but he uh, showed a little bit today. I think he was a bit more motivated. Uh, Ryuden and Kimbozan, a strong touchy eye, both for the front grip. Uh, Kimbozan got a bit upright, and he hasn't, hadn't really got the right grip. He got spun around uh, once... Uh, Ryuden got the grip and pushed him out, facing the wrong way. A Kuridashi rear push out. Both of those guys, two and two wins, three losses apiece. Look, I was expecting uh, a bit tonight from Midori Fuji and Shodai. Midori Fuji, he avoided the inside grip, 
because he's he's lost to Shodai before getting his arms in under the shoulders. Shodai seems to be able to lock up his arms and, and negate the uh, Katasukashi throw there. Um, so he kind of got outside trying to get a neck throw, but Shodai slipped out of it left Midori Fuji upright. He couldn't execute anything effective as Shodai followed him with a body grip and Midori Fuji went out Oshidashi into the crowd, knocking over the waiting Gyoji referee sitting in the front row. No injuries, but a, a, a string of losses for Midori Fuji against Shodai. He needs to come up with a, another game plan there. One and four for Midori Fuji, three and two for Shodai. Uh, so, yeah, not a great result there. Tobizaru versus Atami Fuji. Tobizaru got a close Migi Yotsu, a right belt grip, and denied Atami Fuji a right grip. Uh, tried a neck throw, but they locked up. Atami Fuji was very patient here, and they struggled for quite a while. Tobizaru tried a throw. It's, I, I didn't think this was really Tobizaru's nature of sumo. He seems more of a chaos agent. Getting into a belt grip battle with a guy the, the size of Atami Fuji at about 180 kilos, uh, I didn't think that was going to take him anywhere good. Uh, Tobizaru tried to throw, and again, Atami Fuji is too big. He's too tall. Uh, he must be pushing 190 centimetres. Uh, he tried a leg sweep. It had absolutely no effect. And after the throw attempt, Tobizaru was just too high to his balance of uh, his... Uh, Center of gravity was too high. He got pushed back. He was unable to defend against that bulk and an Oshidashi, Oshidashi win, uh, first win for Atami Fuji, one and four, three and two for Tobizaru. He's doing okay. Uh, Wakamoto Haru and Daesho. Well, look, I, I think I'd almost call this uh, a match of the day because, look, it was a really big hit at the Tachiai. Wakamoto Haru, as we said, he's very motivated. He got a bit lateral after the Tachiai and Daesho got turned around and I my brain at that point went, well, well you're done, Daesho. That, that's, uh, that's you out of this game. But somehow he recovered under pressure, got into a Yotsu battle, which, again, you don't want to get into a Yotsu battle, belt grip battle with Wakamoto Haru. Uh, Daesho lost the grip on the Mawashi and was headed for another loss, but he had a grip. He fainted uh, one way, balked the other, and caught Wakamoto Haru wrong-footed, uh, and pulled him over for a diagonal body thrust down, uh, Sukiyatoshi. Uh, look, I watched that replay a few times to see how he achieved that, and it was simply a feint or a balk one way and pulled his power the other way that had Wakamoto Haru just off balance, didn't quite have his feet in the position for that one. Really big recovery from Daesho, showing a bit of class there, four and one. Wakamoto Haru just out uh, maneuvered there for two and three. Ura versus Kotonawaka. Kotonawaka waited for Ura. Kotonawaka met him, but Ura got Kotonawaka sideways to the bales, couldn't finish him off. Another one who just couldn't finish it once he had the advantage. Another arm grab by Ura on Kotonawaka, but uh, he got a bit of movement, but he can't stay balanced enough to finish it. Kotonawaka is a bigger, much bigger guy. Uh, look, he got a really strong right mawashi grip on his rear, which allowed him to turn Ura around another Ukuridashi rear push out. One and four for Ura. Kotonawaka into the lead with uh, Asanayama for five and zero. Oh. Ura may be lacking a bit of a plan because he admits that that he's a he's more of a reactionary sumo than a planning sort of guy. Uh, but I think against this quality in the the Sanyaku, I think he needs to change his mindset and the way he goes about it. Bit of a tactical change. Uh, Kotonawaka is he's impressive with his maneuverability and speed at the moment. He's improved, I think, out of sight in the last few uh, tournaments. Kirishima and Abi, look, this is simply a bit of a lucky win, maybe a little bit of experience for Kirishima. He was under pressure from a busy Abi. Uh, the rear step out got him the win, but if you. Uh, he, Kirishima was just in trouble. He tried a, a thrusting diagonal throw, but Abi recovered, forced Kirishima back to the Tawara Bales. He, he did the most uh, delicate ballet-like tiptoe across the top of the bales, staying in, but he was quite vulnerable. 
Uh, Arby committed, but then he stepped out. A bit of a push from Kirishima. Uh, Arby stepped out with his back foot. The Yobidashi had to uh, go back for a replay check. Normally you'll hear after each match, uh, you'll hear someone call out the Kimarite, and they'll call it out as a uh, Sukiyatoshi or a, a, a Kuridashi or an Oshidashi. That's usually done on the fly by the Yobidashi who picks up. Sometimes, very rarely, uh, they will have to go back to the replay to work out what the Kimarite was to work out, uh, was it a step out? Was it uh, something different? In the end, uh, it was called a Sukiyatoshi thrust out. Uh, Not sure how they came to that, but okay, there was a hand there somewhere. Kirishima gets four and one. Arby unlucky at 0-5. Uh, Hoshoryu and Goniyama came up next. Goniyama gets a really strong touchy eye, drove Hoshoryu back to the bales for a, what appeared to be a pretty easy Yorokiri frontal force out. He was just, Hoshoryu just got overpowered in that one. Uh, good work by Goniyama. Four and one Hoshoryu, two and three Goniyama. Uh, he gets in tight, he moves forward. Very improved footwork there. Last match of the night on day uh, day five, Teru no Fuji Yokozuna versus our uh, Magashira man who's dropping down the Bunzke a little bit, Hokuto Fuji. They last met in May 2022. Hokuto Fuji has beaten him before. Uh, Teru no Fuji got a really good touchy eye position, locked up Hokuto Fuji in a body grip, got him upright uh, with his arms locked up and eventually pushed him back to the bales for relatively easy Oshidashi. Terano Fuji, uh, I think that gets him to four and one. Hokuto Fuji, three and two. So news out of that is Takayasu the bear is on the list to return for day six. Uh, no word from Takakesho, but I don't necessarily expect him back uh, this basho. Our leaders... Kotonowaka and Asanayama, both on 5-0 and undefeated. 4-1, and one, we have Yokozuna, Terunofuji, Ozeki, Kirishima, Ozeki, Hoshoryu, Sekiwake, Daesho, uh, and our three Megashira men from fairly well down the order, Oho, Kotoshoho, and Onosato. Uh, other news, Waka Takakage down in... Uh, uh, where are we? He's down in third division. He got another win up. They only do seven matches in third division down. So he's 3-0. and He needs one more match for his Makekoshi, and that will get him a promotion to Jurio, second division next, from Makushita. Uh, Hakuoho, he lost today 2-1. and one. It was a bit of a, uh, I wouldn't say an unlucky loss, but it was a, it was a harder match for him. Uh, our little man, Stickbug Sumo, down in Jonadan. He got a close win. He's now one and two. He needs uh, three more wins out of his matches to get his Kachikoshi. Uh, he, uh, look, he's probably lucky there wasn't a mono e and a redo there. The, uh, he was turned over at the time. He almost went dead body Shinatai, but uh, he was probably quite lucky. So... Look, uh, I think the highlight of the last two days, definitely for me, Midori Fuji versus Kirishima. That was quite the match. If you get a chance, go back and watch that one. Uh, And I would say if you get a chance, uh, I would probably watch the Wakamoto Haru versus Daesho. Uh, That seemed like a pretty good match there. Uh, So, yeah, a couple of really good matches today and and yesterday. So... uh, I hope you're enjoying this uh, basho. There's plenty more to come. Leaders, let's see who uh, streaks out into the lead. I think uh, Asanayama looks very motivated. He is battling some of the lower order guys. He hasn't really come up to the Senyaku guys yet. So uh, when he does, that might bring him back to the field a little bit. But he's certainly got his uh, got his skates on in this tournament. Uh, I think... For me, the, uh, the, the favourites would still be Kirishima, Teru no Fuji and Hoshoryu in this tournament. So that's it for today. We'll come back in a couple of days and we'll round up day six and seven probably. Uh, I'll see how time goes. Uh, and uh, I hope you can join me again. As always, join me at uh, Twitter and Instagram, Let's Learn Sumo. Hakio listeners, enjoy the sumo. Thank you. Thank you.